set up a camp, it takes a really big team. We have camp managers, branch directors, logistics chiefs that guide in where the camp goes, along with a camp setup crew. It works really well setting it up so that we can connect into city water, city sewer, hydro, the accessibility for receiving resources, any of the equipment we need, it's a nice central location that's uh, conveniently located. The last thing you want to do is to have to move your camp due to the fire. So there's been a lot of thought put into it that way as to how we can best supply the camp, how we can ensure that it can stay here and be a support, support the crews, and uh, also so that we can minimize that travel time to where we need to on the fire. If you enter into our camp, right off the bat you're going to start to see quite a network of trailers and tents and a lot of the time you probably wouldn't even know what's in each. Where we are here right now we're sitting with 16 mobile trailers, 370 staff moving up to approximately 450 tomorrow and it's completely self-contained whether that be bathroom trailers, office trailers, where everything can be done that could be done in an office back at home. The kitchen is basically a kitchen you would see in any restaurant, but again, on wheels, able to serve that large staff. We even have down to a portable warehouse. Warehouse manager is actually responsible for a number of different facets on the warehousing end. So intake, ordering supplies, making sure that the firefighters get all the applicable equipment. We also support a large part of the camp internally. So uh, there could be things from warehousing that has to do with kitchen, ground staff, uh, ground staff support, as well as my logistical team and the planning team. This is our firefighting warehouse. This is where we house all the equipment that the firefighters use for wildland firefighting, so out on the front line. There's three main things that a firefighter requires to do their job well, is obviously pumps, hose, and their Pulaski. So the finance section, we're working a lot on making sure that we have a really clean product to go into the fire center at the end of the day. We get a lot of paperwork coming through on these fires with all the agreements we have in place. Every person on the fire has to fill out some sort of timesheet. Every piece of equipment has a timesheet. All of that is coming across our desk. It's a huge volume of work and we try to make that into a nice clean package. So as a fire information officer, a lot of my job is handling phone calls. I find a lot of value in being able to give information to people. We often work in, in very remote locations where the work that's done is maybe in the bush somewhere that doesn't have an immediate impact to someone, but we might be working really hard to protect uh, a highway corridor that may feed energy all the way up to Alaska and down to the United States. So it could affect tens of thousands of people depending on how hard those crews work. And so kind of that feedback I get from the public and passing that along to the crews really motivates me to keep going. So tomorrow morning at about 5 a.m. or so, you'll start to see crews getting ready and organized um, to go out for the day. They, you know, some will get a briefing here in camp. Others will head out to the field to get their briefings right away. We have three different shifts that they go out in. Good evening, it's uh, Mark Healy here from the White Rock Lake. It's an exam post. Uh, I'm here to give you a short update tonight on uh, what we're facing. Um, as most of you know who live in the uh, area, tonight around 4.30 to 5 o'clock, our conditions dramatically changed here at this fire. And um, the skies turned really dark. Um, there's ash falling. And it uh, became a pretty serious wildfire event. It's very important that you know if you need more information, you go to bcwildfire.ca or you go to your local government. 
One thing that always really makes me proud in BC Wildfire Service is we have mothers, fathers, daughters, sons, uncles, aunts. People have lives uh, in their home communities and some of them travel to where they work in the summers for us. They kind of put it all to the side when we get into significant response as we have in 2021. It's a real reflection of the type of people that work for BC Wildfire Service, really willing to sacrifice their personal life to Again, protect the public of BC, protect the resources of this beautiful province. And I am so proud of everybody who works in BC Wildfire Service for that commitment to something that, you know, not everybody could commit to. And I think the human at the end of the Pulaski, the human that is at the end of the incident commander post, they have families, they have lives. They're so willing to show up every day and they continue to work to try to evolve this organization into a better place. Thank you.